For new vibe coders, after you kind of set up your tools and you kind of understand what you're doing, there are two things that make the biggest difference between success, good AI coding, a project that actually works and looks good and feels good and you can use it, versus something that doesn't work and you get frustrated and it's a pain in the rear. There's two things that make the difference between success and failure. Number one, context, which is this video. And then number two, figuring out bugs and errors, which is in the next video. In this video, I am going to help you understand how to send good instructions to the AI, which is just paramount of importance, right? And it's no longer just the prompt. Maybe you've heard prompt engineering before. Well, the cool kids are calling it context engineering. Why? That's because what you actually type and send to the AI is only a small piece of what the AI has as context for whatever it's doing. There are context files, there are other instructions, there are rule files here and there. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna go through how to manage all that. The best practices, I'm gonna kind of give these in like a rapid fire succession for how to get the AI to do good work. So I actually wanna start with the user prompt, the actual prompt, whatever you type into the AI chatbot. You may have heard this before, but bear with me for just a moment. It should be specific, it should be detailed, obviously, sounds obvious, but sometimes it's not, and preferably excludes stuff it doesn't need. Really quick, let's go over this. Specific meaning don't, don't try to do too much at once. Instead of saying, hey, let's build an entire app. Let's build an entire company for that matter. Just start with the setup. Set up this framework, build the homepage. Just build the form. If you're building a form that does something and does something and does something, don't worry about the does some things yet, just build the form. And then you could start a new session and then do that. Work in small, incremental, specific chunks. Okay, start there. Number two, detailed. Now, AI can do a lot of things. What it cannot do is read your mind. When you're a complete beginner, you may not know what svelte five runes are. You may not know, but over time, you'll learn about svelte five runes. Over time, you'll learn what a console.log statement does. Over time, you'll learn more and learn more and learn more. You have to translate whatever is in your brain to the AI. If you have details, even if you have no idea what any of that stuff means, still, you know what you want and you know what you need and you know what's in your brain and you have to give that to the AI. Detailed, right? Easy. Last point before I move on. If possible, tell it not to do something. Give it constraints. Try and leave out any information or context or files or folders or code or anything that it does not need. I'm going to show you this file right here, which we're going to come back to in just a minute. This is one of my apps. It's bad. Yes, I know it's bad and I've been working on fixing it. It's almost 3,000 lines of code. That is way too much as I'm giving AI, hey, fix this one little section. It has to like comb through, it has to search for it. It's, it's a lot, right? Keeping your files small, building out components. We're gonna come back to this, but right now just remember, try to exclude anything you know it doesn't need. Try to be specific, work on small chunks at a time, try to give it all the details that are in your head, whatever's in your head, you have to give it. And then if possible, Try to give it constraints. Okay, let's move on to talking about context. More specifically, let's start with files. In your code base, in your project, in a folder, in a file, you should have additional context for the AI. In fact, these are like kind of strict with some of these tools. If you use Codex from OpenAI, it relies upon an agents.md file. If you use Claude Code, it is a Claude.md file. In Cursor, it's called Cursor Rules. If you go to Cursor, settings, cursor settings, and then somewhere over here there is cursor rules. It's a file where you can add more information. And a uh, pro tip, by the way, if you use cursor, now you can actually just use your Claude MD file, which is so handy. Uh, you don't have to worry about cursor rules or anything else. Claude MD file. By the way, these were created by the tools themselves. You can run slash init in a new Claude code session for a project, slash, just like this, and it'll create your own Claude.md file. I didn't write any of this. This was created for me. So what does this do? This contains a bunch of extra info about my app. What framework am I using? What programming language is it? What are my build commands? What are the different features and where are they located? Which folders, which files, what routes? 
I have API routes, what do they do? I have this server function, what does it do? Again, the AI will create the first version of this for you. These files get sent to the AI automatically along with your prompt. So every time that I prompt using Claude code, it knows, hey, don't fire up any other local host. Uh, we're using port 5173, just use that. Hey, we're using SvelteKit for this application. Hey, this is an infinite nested bullet points app with a hierarchical structure. It has real-time data persistence via Firestore, focus, blah, 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 blah. It's just a bunch of additional details and context about my project that gets sent automatically to the AI. You have to have this file. Again, claude.md if you're using Claude Code or cursor, apparently. Uh, agents.md if you're using Codex, or if you're not using any of those tools and you don't know what to do, you can create a YAML file, a dot YML or dot YMAL, and just you can chat with the free version of ChatGPT or Cloud AI to create this for you. Tell it about your app. Throw in any details you can think of. I actually have a brand guide, brand YAML right here that has like my colors and some of the visuals and my my preferred styles. And whenever I'm working on stuff with the AI, I have it read this file. I literally like drag and drop it in until, hey, look at this file for more context. Of course, you can always add files manually as context. In fact, most of the time the shortcut is the at symbol and you can add all sorts of stuff to the AI uh, chat window. So if I fire up cursor here, let's say I was working on a new design and I wanted to attach, sort of, this brand.yaml file, I would just drag it over. You can literally just drag files in here and cursor, and then boom, it says at, you can see the at symbol right there, and you can see it pop up right here. And now this is sent to the AI. And you can also do, you can do a ton of stuff, really. You can also click this button, search for files, you can do code snippets, you can do docs. That's actually a feature of cursor where you can create your own documentation. Uh, get stuff, rules, terminals, active tabs, linter errors. You could attach, quote unquote, lots of different stuff. Oh, by the way, in like URLs, let's say you were working in Astro and you had a question about, oh, here we go, documentation. How about islands architecture? You could grab this URL, copy, come over here in cursor and hit paste and watch. Boom, now it has a little at symbol in front of it and this is going to be, the AI is going to go read this documentation and come back. This is a bread and butter, you will use this all the time sort of uh, tip, right? Use the at symbol almost every single time you do a prompt period. Some tools will automatically grab that. For example, if I fire open Claude code right here and I open this layout.svelte file and you can see it actually kind of attached, quote unquote, this file right here. It's because I have it open, it's an active window. And so now I'm gonna prompt something, it's going to automatically look in here. This is gonna be sent as context. And you can, of course, do the same thing in Cloud Code, at, and then you could do all sorts of stuff, like put these in there, right? A few more really quick tips. Number one, start new chats, start a fresh chat, or clear the current chat often. So all of these AI models have a context window, context window, which is just the amount of information before it can't actually read all the information anymore, right? Like if you sent it a million words, it wouldn't actually analyze all the million words because that's too big for its context window. It might be analyzing only 750,000 words or whatever. And it actually works on tokens, not words, but alas. All of these have a limited context window. Most of these tools these days will actually have uh, a little display, past chats, there you go. There you go, there, here's something I was doing yesterday and you can see this 21.1% of the context window has been used up, meaning I still have a pretty good ways to go. I can keep going back and forth in this same chat session and the chat, the AI, will have access to all the previous information. Sounds pretty obvious. But once this starts to fill up even more, boom, you should start fresh. You should start anew. Yes, you might have to include a few more details about, if you're working on the same feature that is, you might have to include some details on what you already did, what the AI already did, etc. You might have to repeat some of your prompt. It's worth it. Do this all the time. In Claude Code, it's actually clear. Let me just pull up in one right here. If I go in Claude Code and actually do slash context, it'll actually print out a little visual thing here. 
I am at 124 out of 200k tokens, 62%. This is a pretty long chat with a bunch of context in there. What I need to do is slash clear, and that'll actually clear it out. Another interesting feature of Claude Code is it will do compact, clear conversation history, but keep a summary in context. So this will take like 30 seconds to run. It'll analyze all the junk that we just did in this one little session, and it'll cre create a mini version of it while it does a clear so that the new chat, the fresh chat, has a little bit more context. I don't actually use compact, by the way. I don't know why. I probably could, I probably should, but I just use clear quite, quite liberally, and then I start over. And if I run context again, this should be absolutely wide open. 77K, 39%. That's probably because it's using some of these uh, tools right here. Actually, it's because it's reserving 45 tokens. Not sure what that is exactly, but alas. One other pro tip that can actually use up your context window, by the way, but it still will be worth it, is to plan the features with your AI, even if it's an AI agent, who usually just goes off and executes and implements on its own. Don't let it do that. You can turn on planning mode for all of these AI tools, really, and it will set a plan which you can review. The important part here is that making sure the AI is going to do what's in your head, what you want it to do. Sometimes I will enter planning mode on clogged code and it'll actually give me something better than what was in my head, which was fine. I, I didn't know that I wanted that, but yes, now that you mentioned it, Claude, please go and implement. However, sometimes it'll actually come back with a plan that is like 90% fine, but it has something like, oh no, 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 wait, I don't care about that. Don't do that. I don't want that, then I can tell it right then before it codes anything, hey, great plan, except don't do this one little part, now go, now go code. Planning mode is a clog code, you can see planning mode right here, but you can always enter into ask mode in cursor or it's the same thing in codex, I can't actually remember what it's called. Uh, here we go, agent mode could be uh, chat or plan. So it will use up a little bit more of your context window, but the important part when it comes to prompt engineering is making sure that AI is gonna do what you want it to do. So it's always a good practice for every feature ever to plan it first within the little AI chatbot, make sure the plan's good, it is what you want, and then let it go code. My very last tip for you here is to try and not let this happen. As your project grows, you have more pages on your site, more routes, more features, more code. That is obviously just that much more that's going to be sent to the AI. It's gonna take up that context window and it may or may not be details that you want included. Remember when I said, try and exclude any information, any context that the AI does not need. One thing that will come naturally that you, you kind of can't control sometimes is your project gets bigger. This 3000 lines of code, first of all, it used to be 4000, I'm working on it, I'm getting it down. This is a lot now. The AI has gotten worse because it's having to sort through more stuff. It's a bigger app, there are more routes, there's more code. You just need to be aware of that. When you can, again, try and make it as specific, detailed as possible, small chunks. One pro tip here that I've been working through is creating components. I didn't bother with it at first because I was just trying to get the app working, but now I need to take these 3,000 lines and make it 1,000 lines. And I can do that pretty easily just by splitting out some components. If you don't know what that is just yet, AI can mostly do it for you. But it just means breaking out some of these functions or bits of code into a separate file. And then you can import that file and use it in the, the actual code base, but it just kind of removes it. So if the AI doesn't need that, now it's reading like, three lines of code instead of 300 lines of code for this one little part. Okay, I think I've gotten my point across with this. The next video is about troubleshooting, fixing bugs and errors with AI. And if context engineering is important to actually finding success building an app, this next video is gonna be even more important, I feel like. So I'll see you in the next video. Drop me a comment with an emoji if you so desire, and I'll see you then. Adios.